Good afternoon everyone and welcome to my channel Travel Adventurer. Today we're going to discuss the eight most frequently asked questions when it comes to open water and wild swimming in the winter months. So without further ado we'll just get straight in and, and hit those eight questions. So first question being what does it feel like? This is a very personal experience so the feelings might not be the same for everybody but generally whenever you get into into cold water the first thing it does is it rips that sort of temperature down from your body it causes you to get breathless it can cause your skin to sting a little cause tingly sensations you might get like a, a burning sensation um, but those sensations they do ease you know once your body becomes acclimatized to that new cold water environment the key thing is not to panic, let your body acclimatise to it, um, they'll ease, you'll become a bit more comfortable in the water, you can get your swim cracked and then you can get out without getting too cold, okay? Second sort of question, <clears throat> you might have heard the saying, you know, if it's X amount of degrees you can stay in for X amount of time. The best thing to do, everybody's different, everybody's um, bodies and makeup is all different. So it's really difficult actually, you can't say, <clears throat> you know, if it's under 10 degrees and it, say 5 degrees, you can stay in 5 minutes. That isn't going to work for everybody. <clears throat> the best uh, thing I can say is listen to your body. If your body starts getting cold, you know, if you start going numb and y y your uh, hands your, your feet are going numb, it's time to get out. Also what you might see happening, especially if you're doing videos from the water, which I often do, and you may well have seen in some of my videos because it has been cold recently, you know, your speech can become a bit slurred um, and you're having to think a lot more about what you want to say. It's it's time to get out then. You know, Don't go off a, it's such and such a degrees, I'll stay in for, for whatever time. Listen to your body. Don't stay in too long, uh, get out you know, when your body's telling you to. The best thing to do, only stay in for a few minutes on your initial, uh, you know, on your initial swims uh, and just build your tolerance up. But hopefully that's answered question two for you. Number three then, what's the best way to enter the water? Yeah, you might see all these cool videos on YouTube, <coughs> excuse me, um, you know, on, uh, and on the internet, winter swimmers holding up bits of ice, you know, jumping off piers into the sea or, or doing tombstone and all that type of stuff. Do not do that, okay? Again, it's a bit of a personal choice, but what I find and what I would suggest if you're new to winter swimming is ease yourself in gently, okay? Get yourself in, let your legs acclimatise, go a bit further out, you know, let that part of the body acclimatise, just get deeper and deeper and then you know, when you're probably either waist to chest height, once you've sorted your breathing out, really deep slow breaths, a bit like the Wim Hof method, okay, uh, four seconds in, hold four seconds, four seconds out. Once your breathing is sorted, then make sure you can, you, you can stand in the area you're going to be swimming in and just Dip down, get the shoulders in the water, uh, stay there for a little bit, let the body acclimatise, then you should be good for any swimming. That's how I swim. Um, when I first started, I'd sort of get in up to my knees, and then with my hands, I'd splash water on myself before I ventured any further out, you know, in, in, into the river or lake or wherever I was swimming. It's personal choice. Please don't just jump in. Um, what tends to happen is, as soon as your body hits that cold water, you gasp. If you're underwater, you're going to have an intake uh, of a lot of water. You can also get cold water shock, um, etc. Ease yourself in. Um, like I say, splash yourself if you want to, or just progressively get a bit deeper and deeper until you get your shoulders uh, back into the water, probably up to your neck. Okay. Um, but that's how I get in, and that's how I'd encourage any sort of newbies into, into wild and open water winter swimming to get in also so question four then what's the best way to warm up afterwards what's after drop and how do I stop it okay so it's a bit of a two-part question 
best way to warm up afterwards um, is you know make sure you get your core covered up straight away. Get yourself dry. Don't towel yourself off as you normally would if you got out of a hot bath. Just dab yourself down with a towel. Like I say, your skin's likely to be red, a bit sore. If you start scrubbing the water off your body, that's going to really hurt. And I say that from experience. Just dab yourself till you're dry, okay? Next, get those layers on. <clears throat> start with the core of your body first. So, yeah, base layer, something like a t-shirt <clears throat> or a long sleeve um, sort of base layer. Next to mid layer, maybe a fleece, a hoodie, whatever that might be. I normally then put a wind stopper over the top of that and a jacket on, so I'm nice and toasty. Okay, once I've got my core covered, I can then do my legs, uh, feet, etc. All right, core first, that's important. Next, then, uh, make sure you've got a warm drink with you. All right, not a hot drink, don't take a boiling hot cup of tea or or coffee because again you want to gradually um, just increase your body temperature so a warm drink maybe do a coffee but just let it cool before you have it okay plenty of sugar make sure you've got those uh, sugars in there because that's going to help warm you as well a nice sugary snack also helps so <clears throat> after drop then after drop is when your body starts to rapidly cool again. So effectively, when you get into cold water, what happens is the blood's pulled away from uh, from your skin and it goes straight to your core. So when you get out and you dry it off, about 10 minutes after, after you're out of the water, the blood then goes back around your body, gets, uh, gets to your skin and stuff again, and that causes increased cooling, can make you shiver and everything else. But the best way to stop it is this layered method, warm drink, sugary snacks. And then obviously, you know, I have to walk a little bit to get to the river. So I'll walk back, get myself in a nice warm environment. I won't jump straight in the bath or shower. You know, um, I'll maybe wait an hour and then, you know, get showered off. Um, but that's how I, how I stop it. So next question, do I need to acclimatise? Obviously, again, it's personal. Everybody's different. I started my winter wild swimming, open water swimming uh, journey in October. So it was quite cool, but not quite as cool as now. So I've built a little bit of acclimatisation up uh, to, these, to these later months. So I started it because I was raising money for charity, uh, but people start it for all sorts of reasons. You can acclimatise in a number of ways, cold showers, cold baths, uh, maybe just for 30 seconds a minute at a time, um, or you can start in the summer months and just progress through to the winter months. Do you need to acclimatise? It will be better to acclimatise because your body's going to be able to react better to the cold water um, and you're going to be able to stay in for a little bit longer and get your swims in. Could you get straight into cold water maybe in January, February time? Yes, you could. But um, there is a caveat to that, you know, you're at increased risk of, of not being able to cope with that cold water. You might get in and then be straight back out um, or the amount of time you're in the water will be severely limited. Um, so my advice, and this is only personal advice, it's by no means med medical or technical advice, but my personal advice would be acclimatise first, start in the warm months, build yourself through. If you do want to start in the winter, cold shower. Uh, cold baths or you know if you are going to go straight to the river just stay in a minute a couple of minutes get out and then just build it up from there but acclimatization is key and you know if you acclimatize well you'll be able to stay in for a decent amount of time so next then do i need to wear you know a wetsuit boots gloves and a hat no you don't i'm a skin swimmer so i go in just my shorts i do however wear neoprene boots but that's only because it gives me a bit of protection for whatever I'm standing on on the riverbed. Um, I also wear a bobble hat um, whilst I'm swimming uh, just because it keeps the heat in my head as well. But is there a necessity to? No. It was, if you're acclimatising well um, you might not need that. Again it's personal preference so whatever you prefer there's no right or wrong. Next, where is it safe to swim in the winter? 
you know, this really is down to your own judgment, your own knowledge. Um, make sure wherever you swim in, you know well. You know, make sure if you're swimming in rivers like I do, you walk the river bank, make sure there's no debris coming down, uh, no sort of pollution coming down the river, make sure it's not um, flowing too fast. Okay, <clears throat> but it's your own judgment. Uh, so you're going to, you know, do your due diligence, make sure it's easy to get in and out. Where I swim, going downstream, where it flows, it gets shallower, there's nice uh, entrance and exit point for me so I know I'm pretty safe but I don't swim it if it's fast flowing the river's always going to be there but if you make the wrong decision you might not be so it's your own judgment uh, have a look at it make an informed decision um, best of luck to you if you're going in the sea remember uh, the sea's generally warmer than inland waterways rivers lakes uh, that type of thing it's generally a good few degrees warmer which can be good to start your winter swimming journey. However, just remember, if you are swimming in the sea, winter time brings storm surges. So please, 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 just check the weather. You know, if uh, the beaches have got no swim areas on, don't go in. Uh, make sure you're informed. Keep away from riptides. Uh, if you can get in, you know, that's a good way to start. It's a couple of degrees warmer than inland waterways. And lastly, why do it? Wild swimming is absolutely brilliant, and before I did that, I was like, who are these nutters that are going swimming you know, in the winter time? It's craziness. Absolutely brilliant for your mental health. Uh, increased circulation. Um, what else does it do? You know, can improve your mood, can improve your concentration. Um, it increases your metabolism, so it can help with uh, weight loss as well, which is cracking. You're in nature, you're, not, you're generally a bit happier. Um, and also, just on a, another sort of mental benefit, it is incredible for if you're having a really bad day or you're stuck in a rut, you have to make a concerted choice to go, do you know what, it's really cold today, but I'm going to go down the river anyway and get in that river. It shows you what you can accomplish if you put your mind to things. That's one of the biggest benefits for me. Um, you know, not many people do it, although more people are doing it, but it's that mental toughness it builds, especially if the weather's not good, uh, especially if it's mega cold, you know, you're making the choice to put yourself in that discomfort. Once you're out, not only do you get the afterglow buzz, um, which is amazing, increases your endorphins, naturally makes you happier, um, but it also shows you that you can accomplish anything if you put your mind to it. And that's one of the reasons I do it. It builds that mental resilience. Um, it's a bit of uh, humility under adversity as well. I tend to find myself laughing like a hyena when I'm uh, really, really cold because I'm enjoying it, but it is tough. Um, it's also a great way to uh, make friends. There's plenty of wild swimmer, open uh, water swimming groups. So join them. They're invaluable for gaining information like this, gaining information on kit, places to swim, um, and it's a great way to, to make friends. Also, you know, when dog walkers and things are walking past, or, or hill walkers are walk past you in the river, you know, it's a great way to start conversations. Um, and just, you know, that human interaction piece it is massive on improving your mental health. Um, it's absolutely fantastic sport. Please, please, please be safe. You know, use your own judgment. But if you're thinking about, I'm thinking of, you know, wild swimming in the winter time. Do it. Get involved. You won't regret it, um, and you'll start to love it like I do. Anyway, I hope you found this video informative. If you have, uh, I've got plenty more information videos on wild and open water swimming on my YouTube channel. Please. Please, please like and subscribe. Uh, you'll see a subscribe button uh, just here on the video. Uh, there's also one on my main page. So please subscribe to that. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. It just helps me out. Uh, like the videos. I'm also doing challenges. If you have got any challenges for me, uh, please drop me a message on this video. Let me know what you want to see me doing. And I'll do a video uh, dedicated to challenges as well. Hope you all have a wonderful uh, rest of your day.
please check out my other videos. Have a great day, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.